we are. Shasky, how you feeling, man? I, I'm doing good. I'm I'm seeing reports of the Yankees, I guess, offering Aaron Judge some money. Yeah, uh, Aaron Judge got offered apparently eight years, three hundred million dollars. Color okay. Don is meeting with the New York Mets today. Ugh. Yeah, he, he's probably gone. I mean, we all knew that. Flynn, Flynn told us mm. about that. But forget baseball right now. Who cares? Hot stove Steven. Well, I care. Hot stove Steven. Uh, hot stove season, excuse me, is all lukewarm right now. Winter meetings next week. Nobody cares. We all care about the Warriors. We all care about the Niners. We all care about the special guests on the line right now. Just for you, Joe Shasky, since it was your 40th birthday. Uh-oh. Your 40th birthday. One more gift for you, courtesy of the Morning Roasts and Matt Nahegan. <laughs> Ah, it's the one and only Stu Gotts, the co-host of the Dan no Levitar way. Show. Dan Levitar Show with <laughs> Stu Gotts Podcast. He's back on the morning roast. And yes, hey, Stu Gotts, last time you joined us, you no said, way. you know what? Our life expectancy is going to be short because we work morning <laughs> radio. Well, guess what? We're still here working morning radio. Go figure. <laughs> Shasky, how many birthdays do you have? I feel like I just did this like a month ago. No, no, that was for somebody else at the station. But in true Stu Gotts fashion, I'm doing a twofer. I am at the cabin right now working while on vacation. You got to love that, right? That a boy, yeah. You expense everything? Uh, well, expenses at Odyssey. I don't know if you know this. Yeah, yeah, we work tight, at Sports you know Radio, I mean? Levitar. Come on, man. We're not I mean, rolling with Dan on, like man. you are, man. Come on. But you know I think hey, hold on, Chasky, Hold on a second. Let me ask you a question. Are you doing a radio show for your station right now? Yes. Did you fly to the place that you're doing it from? No, I drove. I'm like you. I have like an hour and a half drive away to my cabin, which is outside of San Francisco. I'm up in the Sonoma County. I'm a, I'm up here in the cabin hanging out. My wife's only work week off all year. I got to take advantage of it. All right, but you drove and you're working. You're supposed yeah. to be spending time with your wife, which is just a terrible decision <laughs> by you, by the way. <laughs> yeah, okay. Facts. But you're, but you're sitting here doing your job and anything, okay? Anything that you spend money on has to go back to the company because you're working. Get the I hell like out this. of here. I know. Well, I well, like well this guy, well, listen like to this that. guy, Stu Gotts. He's in a cabin with a house in the Bay Area. Tell me how much dough he's rolling in. He's working morning radio. Meanwhile, I'm working two jobs while hosting a morning show. This guy's no, rolling no, in dough, Stu Gotts. That's a good point. If you get, listen, if you get an expense bill from a guy who, got, who has his second house <laughs> and is a cabin in the woods, right, and you're a manager, you're rejecting that. Hey, <laughs> Stu, Stu, similar to you, I got the golf cart in the garage right now. There's a frost delay. See, I got a tee guy. time for later on. I mean, I'm on the first I, hole. I mean, come on. You got to mesh the two. You got to keep the wife happy. And, but we know that this and, gift was and for Stu, me. And Stu got to, and listen to this. He's wearing a Sherpa while doing the show. He's wearing a freaking oh, Sherpa. Wait, no, but I love Shasky's definition of keeping the wife happy. Working while on vacation and then playing golf. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Just two, two men just cutting it up. But, you know, I have a line. You have a lot of different lines. Mine is pivot, don't panic. So I try to make the best of a good situation even better for myself. I mean, that's part of being completely self-involved. Yes, well, yes, it is. You have, mas- you have mastered my course. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Stu- <laughs> well, well Stu- so I'm not mistaken. This you're a Jets fan. Day. I know it does. Hey, and thanks for Stu Gotts joining us here on Warner Rose. The co-host of the Dan Levertar Show does a great job with that. We love Stu Gotts here in the Bay Area. The Dolphins are coming to town, so you know about the Dolphins. We know about the Jets. I, I do want to start with the Jets, though. Zach Wilson. Uh, the Je- yeah, the Jets have been like it's. It's it's a weird feeling because forever I've been saying, like, hey, can we find a quarterback? Can we find a quarterback? Can we find a quarterback? And we still haven't found a quarterback, but we found everything else. <laughs> like, so, <laughs> like, the rest of the team is really, really good. That defense is Super Bowl good. It keeps them in every single game, uh, but it's been frustrating. You know, I said a couple of weeks ago on our show that the Jets should go after, once they benched him, the Jets should go after Matt Ryan because – I just felt like they needed – the team's good enough now to compete, to win, to, to, to play with anybody, and they've shown that. They've done it. They've actually done it. Um, and I said they should get Matt Ryan because they need some sort of veteran quarterback back there because Zach Wilson's just not good enough. And so – and then you go back two weeks ago, that Patriot game, that debacle oh. where you know, they lose at the final play on the punt return, and that entire game I was – begging Rob Sala, begging him, and by begging him, I'm standing in my living room yelling at the TV, um, <laughs> but I'm saying, hey, give us Mike White, give me Joe Flacco and street clothes, give me any quarterback, because any quarterback would have been able to win that game for the New York Jets, And so, uh, but I'm encouraged by what I saw from Mike White, I will remind people, 
that Mike White did that against the Bengals a year ago and then followed up with four interceptions. So we'll see, <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll see how he does this week against a tougher opponent on the road um, uh, with the Vikings. But uh, I am encouraged by what I've seen from the Jets from this standpoint. The last two drafts, with the exception of the quarterback, Joe Douglas has nailed those drafts. Yeah. And so yeah. we'll see what no happens doubt. here with Zach. We'll see if Mike White can be good. But I think this team has positioned itself well enough where if one of these veteran guys here in the offseason wants to try to win a Super Bowl at the end of their careers, maybe they choose the Jets. So, uh, I'm listen, we don't have much to uh, to cheer about as Jet fans. I certainly haven't over the last 40 years. Um, there is enough young talent on this team. You talk about Brees Hall, who's, who's injured now, but Wilson Gardner, some of the guys they have on defense. There's enough young talent where I'm really excited for the next five or six years. Okay, so we got to get local here because, you know, we're big Niner fans. I'm a diehard 49er fan. So is Bonte. And one of the running themes on your guys' show, because I, I listen religiously, is like, is Tannehill any good? It took like <laughs> 10 years for you guys to like figure out, like, is he any good? And then, boom, he gets Derrick Henry and, ah, he's not bad, you know? From yeah. your perspective, is Jimmy Garoppolo any good? Um, Yeah, like... Yeah, on the right team, yeah, he's really good. On that team, on your team, he's really, really good. I, I don't know about you guys, but for me, and we do a weekly thing with Chris Sims, and he agrees with me on this, where Garoppolo looks, he looks younger, he looks quicker, he mm-hmm. looks thinner, leaner, he's making better decisions, and this is already a guy who's made you know, good decisions. He hasn't turned the ball over. He's playing really well. Uh, he's good for the San Francisco 49ers. If you're asking me, do you put Jimmy Garoppolo on any single team and they instantly become good? No, of course. The answer is no. That's a special kind of quarterback. That's Joe Burrow type stuff. Yeah. Anywhere. That team's going to automatically be a good football team. So I would say Garoppolo is good for your particular team. Uh, I don't, I, you know, but I don't think he'd be great on any team. Yeah, you know? stick, sticking with the same theme, we obviously, me and Bonte, we went to to practice. I'm giving you my bona fides. And we go to practice first <laughs> time. We see Trey Lance, and he's just he just looks the part. And I mean, we the go kid crazy. Was absolutely dominant. Yeah. We put out a video. It goes completely viral. Adam Schefter's talking about uh, reports out of camp. The 49ers quarterback situation. Trey Lance is lighting it up. The kid never really put it together yet. He hasn't had any opportunities. You've seen Tua now. It looked kind of not really good. And then they add Tyree Kill. They add McDaniels, our guy here from San Francisco. And now he looks yep. great. Do you think that same thing can happen for Trey Lance here? Or uh, you don't know? Um, that's it, It's a great question. They're going to have some decision to make, right? Like, this is this is crazy. Because um, Garoppolo, you know, he, listen, he's gotten them to championship games, the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Um, and Trey Lance is, yes, he looks the part, he looks great, but you have no idea if he's actually going to to be great. Um, so, you know, it's, 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 it's a tricky situation. Like, I, I would probably stick, like, if I'm the San Francisco 49ers, because Kyle Shanahan is so great. And what we've learned about Mike McDaniel is just how great Kyle Shanahan and that system, that offense is, because it's so creative. And they, they use, every, like, Tariq Hill here is the best version, and this is saying a lot, of Tariq Hill that we've seen, simply because Mike McDaniel knows how to use him correctly. And Kyle Shanahan knows how to use his pieces correctly, his players correctly. Um, so, I, you know, yeah, I think it could happen here, because I've seen it happen down here. I saw what happened. Mike McDaniel sat with me and Dan and said, who is the most accurate passer you've ever seen? And I will be honest with you guys. I was shaking my head, like agreeing with him on the outside and the inside. I'm like, this guy's a fool. What is he talking about? <laughs> but it turns out that he's right because Tua has been uh, as accurate as any quarterback in the NFL. So I believe in Kyle Shanahan. I believe in the way uh, they coach, their style of coaching, that entire coaching staff. And so, yeah, I think they can get it done with Trey Lance. Absolutely. Stu Gotts, co-host of the Dan Levitard Show. Of course, Stu Gotts, we love him all over the place. The podcast, of course, uh, find it on the iTunes app, iTunes everywhere, Stu, Spotify, everything. Uh, Stu Gotts, i got to ask you about the Golden State Warriors because they've got out to a bit of a tumultuous start, 3-7 and seven to start the season. They're now 11-11. and 11. I'm sure everybody was talking about the punch hurt around the world in training camp with Draymond Green and Jordan Poole, oh. but it feels like they've rectified the situation. But outside of the Bay Area, because we're stuck in this bubble, obviously, watching the Warriors every night, what is your impressions of the Warriors so far? And do you believe they're still a championship contender? I do. Uh, I think as long as you have Steph Curry, as long as you have that core of players and they have them combined with some of the younger guys, uh, I do. I know they haven't been good on the road. They've been good at home. Uh, they're the type of team. They've arrived at this point, guys, where 
home court advantage means uh, less to them than it does to just about any team because they've been through it so many mm-hmm. times. So mm-hmm. if they're a four seed, big deal. If they're a five seed, big deal. Uh, we've seen seeds like that get to the NBA Finals before. Um, but, yeah, I think as long as you have Steph Curry, who's still playing at this level, I know Clay's not what he used to be, and Draymond is what he is. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, you know, in, in, the, in the Western Conference, I know Memphis is – like, I'm not buying in. No one's buying into the Jazz. No one no, really believes no. the Blazers no, are this no. good. Um, there are some good, you know, the Lakers are, are, are just not that good of a team. Um, and so, yeah, I, you know, I know Phoenix is out there. Um, I know there's, just, you know, some other teams out west. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still willing to put my money on Steph Curry, even if they were a four or five seed guy. Yeah, I'm me still too. willing to put my money yeah. on Steph yeah. and those guys. They've, they've, they've run the road game in 27 straight series. I'm with you, Stu, guys. Still, we're yeah, doing and this. think about it. When, you, when you're when you on the road in the playoffs, you just got to win one of them and then hold yep. serve at yes. home. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. you know, they're probably the best home team in the NBA. Stu, we're doing this entire thing wrong. Okay, I am. I feel like you and I are kindred spirits because Bonte, similar to Dan, is a big TV star. Okay, he does local Warrior pre and post game shows, and I got to be the guy every single day begging him to FaceTime me on television and get me on there. And yet he's got me at it like the Heisman arms distance every single time. He's hanging out with one of my idols, Chris Mullen, every single day, and I'm over here. I'm the secret sauce that keeps the radio going. I need some advice. Oh, how to man. navigate this man's ego on a daily basis oh, because you do Just it with Dan annoy every day. the living hell out of him until he says yes that's <laughs> all you do oh. and don't leave like, Dan, we used to finish our radio show with the highly questionable, and I would just hang around in the TV studio. It's the left part was forced because he felt so badly for me. I sit there with, like, puppy eyes and, like, oh, man, let me get in there. And eventually he just brought me on. So just, like, listen, don't, don't ever leave us. Don't go oh. to that. Listen, no more trips to the cabin. No more golf. <laughs> just hang around with him until he puts you on the Dan TV. Well, well, that, well that's the problem, Stu Gotts. As soon as the radio show's done, I'm like, hey, where's Shasky at? He's already in his car halfway home. And I'm sticking around well, trying to prove. Well, that's what we no, no, but that's what we do. That's what <laughs> Thank people like me and Jeffy do. Thank we, you. Listen, we get in our car, we drive home, and then we complain <laughs> for not doing the thing. And we want to do simply because we physically weren't here. Hey, but listen to this, dude, guys. So Chris Mullen, we promo our show every day on Warriors pre and post game uh, live, pre game and post game. Uh, we talk about what we're, what we're talking about on this program, the morning rose, and Bully names drops Shasky every, every single show. Show. And he lives for it. I'm like, dear God, you're giving this guy too much attention to the point where we're talking about all the trolls where Clay Thompson's like, you know, I had to leave the trolls alone. And Shasky could have swore they were talking about him. His I, I wife were. and Shasky were convinced we were talking about him. Talk about the ego it. of this guy. I mean, listen, Shasky. This yeah. guy is so very strong. In so, strong. <laughs> so strong. It is so strong. Wait, Way Shasky, too strong. I found an angle for you. Huh. Your angle is Chris Mullen. If Mullen likes you enough, okay, your angle is Chris Mullen. 100%. Go through him to get on that show. Oh, boy. Okay? 100%. 100%. <laughs> don't don't tip him. Don't do it, Stu Gatz, because he's going to bug <laughs> Mullen, and it's going to bother me. And I'm like, dude, I already have to deal with you at 6 in the morning. I don't want to deal with you at 10 o'clock at night. Oh, dude. Stu, you got to understand, <laughs> we're trying to create a community here. Because, look, the one thing I love about, about the Levitard show is Dan represents Miami. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you moved down there, but you represent Miami as well. And your entire crew and the community around the show, no me and B are both native San Franciscans. Yep. And so we're trying to create a community around our show. There's a lot of things the same. And the one thing that's funny is my dad now thinks he's a part of our show. See, yeah. like my dad calls in whenever he wants. Dude, he hits the bat line. He has the bat us- line. Yeah, it's a secret bat line, and I see the bat line yeah, ring, yeah. and I'm like, I'm not going to the bat line right now. It's Bob he thinks he's the third so. member of the show. <laughs> well, but Chasky, hold on, uh, hold on a second. Whose fault is that? Because the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Exactly. Hundred yeah, percent. <laughs> I would be surprised your dad is part of the show. Dude, it, it's so bad, Stu Gatz. We're on YouTube, right? And we have your picture up, right? It says John Weider, Stu Gatz, right? Got John Weider, excuse me, John Weider, yeah. Stu Gatz. It has your photo up there. Papa Shasky calls so much. He has his own photo now when he it's calls in. Like he's a guest. It's like his own graphic. It's unbelievable. <laughs> he deserves it. He deserves it. <laughs> <he gets. laughs> Matter of hey. fact, he's probably going to call in two minutes. <laughs> hey, 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 you know what, Stu? I want you to tell Bonte about the time you left the Miami Heat game prematurely because this is a great story. Game six? Yeah, it was game six. Listen, oh, life is all, listen, life is all about a good parking spot and leaving the <laughs> game at the right time. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> and in this particular case, uh, I've never left the game at a worse time in my entire life. Uh, you so, know what? Uh, 
Uh, that? I, I was going to say, I leave Niner games early, too, because the traffic is so bad coming out of Levi Stadium so bad. that I time it perfectly, and I navigate through the park. I do some illegal things to get out that parking lot, no doubt about it, but leave the game no, six I early. And you, and you, got, you guys know as well as anyone how long the NBA postseason. It's like another season, right? Yeah. You get the game six of the NBA Finals. You're like it's been like three months of playoff basketball, right? And I thought the series was over. Uh, they had roped off the court. Uh, they were, you know, the Spurs were were already celebrating on the bench. Um, and so I was walking out Game Six uh, of that arena. And as I'm, wa- I'm already outside the arena. And I knew for many, many years ago in the games that there's no way, there's no reentry. I'm not getting back. <laughs> and so as I'm walking to my car, and there's a bunch of heat fans walking with me all of them right and as i'm walking you hear this enormous enormous cheer roar from the crowd right and i'm like oh my god something good happened (laughs) (laughs) the historical happened oh my god i left the game and i see all these fans so i i just keep walking i keep walking to my gray parking spot okay and i keep walking and all these fans heard the same sound i heard they start turning around and going the other way. And as they're passing me, I'm like, I'm telling them all, hey, you ain't getting back in. You ain't getting back in. Like, what is that? You ain't getting back in. You ain't getting back in. Uh, so I just kept walking. And what I learned when I got in my car is what I missed was the greatest shot in NBA history. <laughs> 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 and the overtime that ensued. Okay? Hey, and so I had to drive home. And I couldn't listen to it on the radio because now I'm in a situation where I have to call my wife. She uh, said, oh, my God, did you see that? I said, no, I'm in the car. She started yelling at me. <laughs> and so I asked her, I said, hey, do me a favor. Tape the game. I'll listen to nothing. Because you can't even listen to FM all right. the way home. Someone's going to blur, uh, blur out yep. the score, right? Yep. And so I just I drove home in complete silence. Got home very quickly, though, guys. Normally, that would be like a two-and-a-half-hour drive with traffic. I was home in 40 minutes, sat down on my TV, watched, uh, watched over time. But still, to this day, regret. I was there. I was five rows away from where we're at. Oh, my God. God. <laughs> and, and I missed it. Man. Stu, before I, you get on uh, out of here, you and you and Dan have been together almost 20 years, correct? Uh, I think just over 20, actually. Okay. Wow. Uh, apologies. Apologies. Yeah, wow. So, that's, what? That's, what? me and Bonte, we, we're like, you know, we love each other. We're like brothers, but we, we at times want to kill each other, and we need a break every now and then from each other, but in a good that's way. That's why he's in a cabin. <laughs> what, what is the key ingredient to this relationship long term? Give it to me. Uh, I think from both our standpoints, um, if he's the levitard of your show, let him be the levitard of your show and stop annoying the hell out of him trying to be the levitard of the show. Just be it's happy true. being Shasky. You know yeah. What I'm saying? yeah. Like, yeah. I, listen, I wanted to get into this industry desperately. Yeah. And everyone has a different, you know, different path. And everyone has, you know. So if you asked me 20 years ago, hey, to God, this is what you're going to, this is the character you're going to turn into. Would I have taken it? Probably not, because I wanted to be Christopher Mad Dog Russo, or yeah. I wanted to be Mike Francesa, or I wanted to be Dan Lebitard. But you know what? I ended up being Stugatz, and Stugatz is pretty damn close to who I actually am. And I've embraced it, and I'm good with it, and I realized very quickly, hey, uh, this is fun. I never feel like I'm working for a living. They I pay me pretty well. Yeah, they pay me pretty well. I'm okay being Stugatz. Yeah, that's, not, that's not well, bad. That's not bad. The only advice I'm disappointed in is you're telling them to hit up Chris Mullen and hang around our pregame set. My producer already does that, Sam Lutman. <laughs> he gets in. Hey, I'm coming by the set. For what? You just produce a running show. Stay away from me. I deal with you at 6 in the morning and 8 o'clock at night when we make our pre-show uh, calls. He comes to yeah. the set. And I'm going to have Lutman and Shask can come to the set. Thanks a lot, Stu Gotts. I appreciate that. No, you got it, man. And listen, you know what I know. I mean, this entire industry is a bunch of vultures. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it is. Some scavengers, no doubt about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. <laughs> Backstabbers. Yeah. Well, that's the fun. Bonte gets asked all the time, and you're talking about, like, your character. Right. My wife is she's very annoyed with me because she goes you really are who you are on radio and i want you to not be you who you are on radio i want you to be a different version because there's times you embarrass the absolute crap out of our family and i'm like hun i just i'm being myself and it's it's hard to separate the two Yeah, uh, reminder, she has a cabin in the woods. And other- Thank you, Stu. <laughs> yeah, this guy's Thank bummed. you, Stu. Hey, I'm the Lepertar, yet this guy has a cabin up north, and I'm sitting in a condo or apartment, whatever uh, you want to say, in the Bay Area. I'm good with money. <laughs> yeah, you know, so this sweet, guy. Man. Shasky, I'm sure your wife is nice, but if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> yeah, feel me? Hey, Stu, Stu got, thank you for thanks, coming on, thanks, man. Thanks, man. It was I'm a, a big pleasure, fan. man. Thank you. Hey, guys, you got it. Shasky, happy birthday, man. Maybe Listen, I'm telling you guys right now, 
San Francisco. Look at the Dead and Company tour. The final three shows are in San Fran. I'm coming out there. Maybe I'll come in and sit in. Hey, for, let's uh, go to Olympic oh, Club. Stu, that'd Stu, be awesome. Stu, I'll get you some sticks. You, me, yeah. my dad, let's go out to the O Club. Let's go play the Ocean of the Lake course. I'm dead serious. I would love that. But, Chasky, here's what I'm angling for. You're going to flake on me. Habit. I want to stay in your cabin. <laughs> oh, yeah. Come up to Northwood. This is the this is the home of where Alistair McKenzie, the guy who built the uh, Augusta National, he built the course very similarly up here in the uh, Bohemian Grove. It's it's right up your alley. Pot and dead music. My dad's a deadhead. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, Shasky, we're going to hang out. But when I say I want to stay in the cabin, I want to stay in the cabin without you being there. Yeah, I think <laughs> that's yeah. <laughs> When's the tour? When are you guys coming out here? Uh, it's going to be, uh, so it's going to be like July in that area. Somewhere. Okay. Oh, we got you. All right. We got for you. sure. Summertime. We we'll clear the calendar. Yes, absolutely. All good. Yeah, and no, I mean I love, that. Listen, I, I love Northern Cal. I was out there at Shoreline Amphitheater last summer. I was out playing Pebble Beach. Uh, I love that area. I love San Fran. So we're coming out in July, man. I'm looking forward to it. Let's and Chasky would teach you not to say San Fran. Yeah, we It'll say teach- Frisco, but that's yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's okay. It's I all mean. good. And it's not, no big deal. Stu, I mean it. Thank you for everything. And thanks for paving the way for two knuckleheads like me and Bonte. Because without people like you and radio, <laughs> no we wouldn't have jobs. I'm serious. Yeah. No, you got, well, listen, Bonte seems like he's doing just fine. <laughs> <laughs> Facts. <laughs> Stu got you in a bro. He's we love man. you, man. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much. Hey, happy birthday, dude. Seriously. Thanks, brother. <laughs>